Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another live iThemes training event. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host here at iThemes training, and I am joined today by Paul Gilzo. Paul is a developer relations engineer at platform.sh. He's a former programmer and analyst principal at the University of Missouri. He's also a web application and security evangelist, a software instructor, and a conference presenter, which is where I met Paul at WordCamp Birmingham uh, last month. Welcome, Paul. Glad you're here with us at iThemes Training. How are you today? Thank you very much. I'm doing great. Anxious to get, anxious to share what uh, I've got to show everybody today. Yeah. So we were talking right as we kicked off today about uh, it, some people say regex, some people say regex. Uh, Paul, what camp are you in? I'm in the reg, in that hard G. Because it's regular expressions, so I figure it's be it's best to be regex. Though there's a chance I may slip up and say regex during the presentation, so there I'll you go. get that ahead of time. <laughs> I don't think there'll be any lynch mobs forming for you, so we'll be okay there. Yeah, right. So uh, we just just fine. So uh, we have a lot to cover talking about regular expressions today. Uh, give us a little bit of an overview of where we're going to go over the next hour. Sure, we're going to talk about what regular expressions are. Talk a little bit about what they're not talk about uh, use cases for regular expressions outside of programming as well as inside programming. And then we're gonna dive into those hieroglyphics. We're gonna look at those symbols and then walk through each of those symbols. And I'll show you live how choosing and using different uh, symbols will change the matches and, and what we find using the regular expression. And then at the end, we're gonna use regular expressions to solve a puzzle. Oh, fun. All right, so in our pre-show, we took a little poll to see um, you know, where people were on their understanding of regex, and most were very low, like zero, one, two out of 10. So uh, can, can someone like myself with a very low understanding of regex, will, will, we able to, will we be able to get something out of today's training? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I start at zero and we build up. Um, I don't assume you know anything, but my goal though is even if you do know something, I'm hoping to show you some things you maybe not have seen before or a new way of explaining it and, and to help you understand it a little bit better. Yeah, excellent. So I'm looking forward to this. Paul and I were also talking about AI and the fact that you can use something like ChatGPT to generate a regular expression. Absolutely. But honestly, you have to know a little bit about the whole idea of what regex is, even to use a tool like ChatGPT. That's right. So it should be a lot of fun. All right, a couple of housekeeping notes, and I'll turn it over to Paul. Uh, if you're just joining us in Zoom, welcome. We're glad you're here. Pop open the chat. You can tell us hi, where you're logging in from today. Uh, if you, as you chat, make sure that uh, the little blue box beside two is set to everyone. It usually defaults to hosts and panelists for most folks. So if you'd like <laughs> others to see what you say, make sure it's set to everybody. Also, uh, pop open the Q&A link there. Uh, if, if you mouse over the shared screen in your Zoom window, there's a Q&A icon. That's the spot to ask your questions. You can do that at any time during the presentation today. Uh, and what I would suggest that you do is just keep that Q&A box open because as questions are asked, you'll see the little thumbs up icon below the question. And uh, you can thumbs up a question that you have as well. And when we get to our time of Q&A at the wrap up today, uh, we will uh, take those questions in the order of upvotes. So with that, I'm gonna dis, oh, uh, we will have a replay also, one more thing there. Let me just drop the link bundle in the chat as well for anybody just coming in. Uh, the link to today's slides is there in the chat as well as the link to the replay. It'll be up in about an hour or so. Uh, after we finish up today, along with today's transcript and anything that's shared in the chat log. So now I will disappear, turn it over to Paul. Let's get started. Perfect. All right. So thank you for that introduction, Nathan. As you said, my name is Paul Gilson. I am with a company called Platform.sh. If you've never heard of us before, we are a secure enterprise grade uh, platform as a service for building and scaling your applications and websites. We handle that infrastructure and deployment so you can focus on building that next great application. However, that's not why you're here. You're here to learn about regular expressions. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna talk about what they are. We're gonna talk about the symbols that you see often and go through each of those symbols to, to hopefully give you some clarity as to what those symbols are doing. I do hope that you follow along. So if I do add on my uh, GitHub profile, I've got this regex, reg, see, I told you I might mess up, this regex presentation pinned up there, and it contains a list of uh, word banks that I'm going to be using during this presentation, um, as well as using a tool called regex101.com. I've got that up right here. We're going to be using that to help build out these regular expressions and see how we, as we use these different symbols, it changes what we match. 
So what are regular expressions? Well, regular expressions were originated back in the early 1950s by a mathematician named Stephen Cole Clean, who was trying to describe regular languages in formal language theory. What he wanted to do was build a formula, an algebraic way to describe languages. And while that's interesting from an academic standpoint, that's probably not what you think of when you hear the phrase regular expression. What you think of is probably something like this. All right. So if you've never used regular expressions and you're looking at that and you're having that same reaction, or if you've used them before and you have this reaction every time you have to try to use them, I get that. Regular expressions kind of have a bad rep because there is a bit of a learning curve. My goal is today is, again, to, to introduce you to them and hopefully be that aha moment, be that, that moment of clarity where it starts to make sense. So in, for today's presentation, for this webinar, when I say regular expression, what I'm referring to is a sequence of characters that we use to represent a pattern inside a larger body of text that we're trying to locate. So some things that regular expressions are not. They are not a programming language. While they kind of look like programming language, uh, and we certainly use them in programming languages, they're not. We do have some branching and some basic words, but they're not a programming language. They're also not unlearnable. Again, as I mentioned, they kind of get a bad rap. In fact, I had a previous attendee say this to me during the presentation in frustration uh, because they can be difficult uh, to learn sometimes. But they are a very powerful tool for you to have in your toolbox. Now, I know personally I'm guilty that whenever I get a new powerful tool, suddenly all of my problems look like they can be solved with that tool. So the other thing is to remember that they are not the solution to every problem. You've probably seen this comic from XKCD where he talks about how he's got some problems and he's going to use regex to solve it. Now he has one more extra problem. And it's true. In certain scenarios, uh, using a regular expression can actually introduce more issues into a problem you're trying to solve. So we're going to talk a little bit about some things to do to ensure you're not doing that and some appropriate situations in which to use them. So what can we use them for? Well, you can kind of think of them as control F on steroids. We can use them to find text inside larger bodies of text. Um, I've got an example here in, in a Word doc or a Google doc. It's an article on wolves. All right, and let's say I'm doing some research and what I need to do is find in this document, we'll pretend it's much bigger, I need to find every instance of the word wolf or wolves. Now I could bring up control F, except I gotta do it in the right window here. I could bring up control F and type out wolf and sure enough it's matching wolf, but it's not matching wolves. So I'd have to come back over and I'd have to do wolves. Now it's matching wolves, but I also don't want red wolves. I want brown wolves, I want gray wolves, uh, even rare wolves is okay, but I don't want any matches on red wolves. So not sure if you knew this, but in both Word and Google Docs, we can use regular expressions. And by building a regular expression and using that, now, if you'll notice, I'm matching gray wolf, but not red wolves, rare wolves, gray wolves, gray wolves, brown wolves, but again, not red wolves. So we can use those to help us find text in situations where a control F might not work. Uh, we can also use regular expressions to validate text. So if we're receiving text or information from an external source, we're getting it in, we can use regular expressions to ensure that that text is what we want and in the correct format and the format that we're anticipating. We can also use it for string manipulation. We can actually take a body of text, pluck out pieces from that body of text, and then reformat it into something else that we need. Got another example here inside of, so I can click on it, uh, inside of an ex, uh, Google Sheets, or you can do this inside Microsoft Excel, where I've got some phone numbers. Maybe I've imported these in from an external uh, service. And they're in all different kinds of formats. I've got some with dashes. I've got some with parens and spaces, others with dots. And what I need is for these to be in the exact same format for every single one. So again, using some regular expressions, I can go in and grab, pluck those pieces. I grab hold of that. Pluck those pieces those dates, or not those dates, excuse me, those numbers out of that original source and reformat those so every single phone number is in the exact same format that I need. All right, so how do we actually use, yeah, so basic, they're, they're magic. 
They're not magic. That's the thing. They look like magic, but they're not magic. So how do we actually use it? Well, I said earlier that regular expressions are simply a sequence of characters that we use to represent patterns. So we have lots of different types of characters we can use to build a regular expression. We have literal characters, we have special characters. As we begin to combine different special characters, we need to build possibly character classes. As those character classes expand what they contain, at some point we might need shorthand character classes or character sequences, just lots and lots and lots of characters. So my idea today is to start at the beginning and show you each and every single one and, and show you live how it changes what is matched. So we're gonna start with literal characters. Literal characters are exactly what it sounds like. It is literally, in this example, an F followed by an O followed by an O. So if you're following along in that regex presentation, this is foo.txt. I've simply taken that word bank and dropped it in here. And if this is not big enough to see, please let me know and I'll blow this up a bit more. But up here at the top is where I can enter in my regular expression. I'm going to use the characters F, O, and O. And hopefully you can now see that sure enough, this regular expression engine is using that literal expression to match every instance of o, F, O, and O, no matter where it shows up. Now I'd like to point out, notice it didn't find capital F, O, O, because by default, those regular expression engines, when they're reading those regular expressions, they are case sensitive. So if I need to match a capital F, I'll have to use the literal capital F character versus that lowercase. Another piece I'd like to point out is notice before my expression and after my expression, I've got those forward slashes. Those are referred to as delimiters. Delimiters are what define the edges or the boundaries of our regular expression. So when we give this regular expression to a regular expression engine, we're saying inside the delimiter is the regular expression. But most engines will allow you to change that character. Reason being is sometimes you're gonna want to actually search for that character, such as path to foo. In this case, notice now my regular expression builder is already saying, hey, there's a pattern error because you're trying to use that delimiter character inside your expression, that's gonna cause a problem. So in this particular tool, I can change that delimiter right here on the left, and now I've got a valid regular expression. Let's flip back over. All right, now I've used the term regular expression engine a couple of times now, and I haven't defined it, so I wanna pause real quick and talk about regular expression engines. A regular expression engine is simply a piece of software that can ingest a regular expression and process it against that larger body of text. It is sometimes referred to as a flavor. So if you'll notice back in the tool I'm using, there on the left-hand side, it does list multiple, and can you see my, I don't know if you can still see me, but I'm putting air quotes, multiple flavors, multiple versions or uh, implementations of a regular expression engine. The reason, and I'm going to give you several warnings today, and this isn't a, a, hey, don't do this. It's more of a, hey, be aware of this. The reason there are multiple flavors is it's very similar to the scenario we had back in the 2000s. If you're old enough to be around in the 2000s and you were online, you might remember that most websites had something that said best viewed in IE or Netscape Navigator or something like that. And that was because back then every browser could implement their own proprietary set of features that may or may not work inside another browser. Regular expression engines are the same way. They're all able to implement features inside that engine that may or may not work somewhere else, which is why it's so important that you can change the flavor that you're using to match where you're going to be using it at. Um, this is partially because the standards are very loose. There's actually only one true standard for regular expressions, and that's POSIX basics regular expressions. Um, the problem with it is it, it is very basic. It's very limited in what it supports. It's also pretty old. If you have worked with regular expressions a little bit, you, and at, if you're after today, you start working with them some more, you'll probably come across PCRE, which stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. It is not a standard, although it's often adopted by many as a quasi-standard. Um, it's actually an open source library written in C whose original purpose was to take uh, the implementations, the feature set from Perl 
and build out new regular expression engines that were compatible with that feature set in Perl. Now it is a living open source project, so it has gone through multiple versions. And in fact, at one point, Perl adopted features from Perl compatible regular expressions to make itself more compatible with, and if you can see this, I'm doing big circles, right? It's kind of circular. But the important piece to remember is to, again, always test in a regex tool. I'm also going to try to give you a series of bonuses or extra tips. And the first one today is to use a regular expression builder. You have so many options now that we didn't have in the past. Uh, not only the one I'm using today, which is again, Regex 101, but there's Regexer, there's Rubular. If you prefer an installed option, you cannot go wrong with Regex Buddy on Windows. It is unfortunately only on Windows, but it's phenomenal. Um, there's also expressions on Mac, but take advantage of them because they give you a ton of information. So again, not only, and hopefully you can see my mouse here highlighting these, uh, not only can you choose the different flavors, it gives you warnings and errors if there's a problem on the up in this one, it will explain exactly what it's doing. So if I change that back to foo, it'll say, hey, I'm trying to match literally the F character followed by the O. It shows you what it's matching inside your body of text and you can actually click on each one and highlight it. And it gives you a bunch of shortcut or quick reference. So tons of information that you can take advantage of. All right, so we're going to jump right into all these characters. This is the 12 special characters that we're going to go through. Uh, the first one is what's referred to as an escape character. Uh, previously, when I was doing that path to and we got that error, if I hover over that, you'll notice it says, hey, you've got an unescaped delimiter. You're using a delimiter that's actually um, that boundary, that delimiter tool. But what you can do in most languages, in most of these expression engines, is use the escape character, that backslash. So what the backslash special character does is tells the regular expression engine, hey, this next character that follows, don't treat it like it's normal meaning, treat it with its alternate meaning. So in this case, I could say, hey, escape that forward slash, and now it's going to try to find actually that forward slash character. All right, so we're going to jump into the next set. The next, the first one is the caret symbol. Um, it's part of a subgroup called anchors. And a caret symbol is going to anchor a pattern to the beginning of a string or a line. So I'm going to come back over here and we'll do foo. And notice again, it's matching foo at the end of some path to foo. It's matching foo and foot, foo bar. It's matching foo inside bar foo. But if I add that caret to the beginning, watch what happens to bar foo. Bar foo is no longer matched because it's saying, hey, this pattern should only be at the beginning of a string or a line. These anchors are sometimes referred to as assertions, it's returning a true or a false. If we have a beginning, we probably need an end. So the dollar sign is also an anchor, but to the end of a string or a line. So just like that caret, simply, but, or, but instead of the beginning, it's gonna be the end. So again, if we come back here and get rid of my caret. So now watch uh, like foot. I add that dollar sign at the end. It's now not matching foot or foobar or foobar. It's only matching foo, where it shows up at some path to foo, bar foo, bar foo. And then also foo, where it's the whole word, because it still matches the end as well as the beginning. All right, a little bonus for you. You should always anchor when possible. Whenever you have the ability to anchor, you should, even if your pattern is matching what you're expecting. The reason for that is optimization and performance as a regular expression is parsing that body of text, as it's parsing the regular expression and then parsing the body of text, it's having to move through step by step by step. If we can designate the position of where that pattern should show, then as it's parsing, if that is no longer true, it doesn't have to continue parsing the remaining piece of that line. It can skip that line and go to the next. So whenever you can, make sure to anchor. Oops, there we go. All right, the next character in our list of special characters is the opening square bracket. This allows us to define what's called a character class. A character class is going to match a single literal character, like we talked about earlier, from a list of literal characters. So I mentioned earlier that it is case sensitive. So if I wanted to match all alpha characters that are lowercase, A to do Z, I could build a character class and type out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, et cetera, all the way to the end. That is a lot of typing though. So they also allow us to define ranges 
of literal characters. In that case, instead of having to type out the entire alphabet, I can say A dash Z or A through Z. And the ending square bracket is not a special character by itself unless it's used with the beginning one in order to create that character class. So let's take a look at this. So I said earlier, you know, we didn't match when we typed out foo, we weren't matching that capital F foo. If I instead wanted to match both, I could create a character class and put both in there. And now I'm matching foo as a lowercase, but also foo as a capital case, because it's coming in here and it's saying, hey, this is a character class. I'm going to go into the character class and I need to match one of the characters inside the character class. In this case, it's F lower or F upper followed by O and O. But I could also do a range, something like maybe B through uh, F. And now I'm matching foo, but I'm also matching Kubar. Uh, I think I've got another one in there. Oh, I went through F. But oh, yeah, I was doing F, but I didn't match. There we go. I didn't match Rubat because I had only gone from B to F. All right, the next character, the next special character we have. Oh, I almost forgot. So inside of that character class, as we build that character class, inside of it, other special characters aren't special. They're normal characters. So if we're going to use uh, the dollar sign character, we don't have to escape it. The only characters inside that have to be escaped are the closing square bracket, because that's where we define the end of our character class. Uh, the backslash, because that's our delimiter. The caret, which we'll talk about some more. And then that dash, because that's how we create a range. Now, the next special character is the caret symbol. The caret symbol is the negation character. So if you're sitting there going and having this exact same reaction as Michael Scott, uh, that's OK. This is the first prime example of why regular expressions are so challenging to understand. And that's because these special characters, what they represent can change depending on where they're used and in the relationship to other special characters where they're used. So inside of a character class, if we create a character class and we place a caret symbol at the beginning inside the character class, this reverses the character class or negates it. It says, find anything that isn't this character class. So back over here, if I had F, O, and O, let me scroll up so you make sure you see that. And then I add a caret, it says, find anything that is not a lowercase f followed by an O and an O. So notice now it's not matching to it. Matched capital F, O, O, because that's not a lowercase. And it matched COO and BOO and ROO. Gets even crazier because we could add an anchor to the beginning outside. And so now we're saying, hey, find this pattern only from the beginning, where inside this character class match a single character that isn't a lowercase f followed by an O, followed by an O. So just the important bit here, even if this isn't 100% clear, is to remember that with some of these characters, if they're next to other special characters, it's possible that the meaning has changed in what they're representing, which is why, again, it's so important to build these, to use these builders, because it, again, will show you exactly what it's trying to do and help you learn these regular expressions. Ooh, okay, so I mentioned building out some of these character classes can get really long, right? So if I were to come back out here and build out a character class and maybe he's trying to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's too long. Even if I wanted to do maybe A through Z and then A through Z, that starts to get really long. So we have something called shorthand character classes or in some expression engines, it's referred to as special sequences. Uh, the specific way you access these special sequences will depend on the expression engine, but many of them use the delimiter character followed by a literal character. And what they are is they stand in or are shortcuts to bigger character classes. So the lower, so backslash lowercase d is simply a shorthand for the character class zero through nine. The lowercase backslash lowercase w is shorthand for capital A through Z, lowercase a through Z, zero through nine, and an underscore. There's about 26, 27 other ones. Again, you don't have to remember all those because somewhere in your builder will be quick reference. And if I scroll 
down here, you can begin to see some of those. And it's showing you, hey, backslash D, any digit, backslash W, any word character. So just know if, again, when you are reading a regular expression, if you see a backslash and what should normally be a literal character, that's probably a shorthand. You just need to go look that up. Then when you're building, they make this much easier to write out and much more condensed and easier to follow. All right, the next one I call the weird one uh, because most of these have a partner, right? So we had the anchors where we had the carrot and the dollar, they were together. We had the character class, which had the opening square bracket and the ending square bracket. They have partners. This one has no partner. It's the period, and it simply stands in for any single character except for line breaks. So it can be anything at all. So if I come in here and I do FOO dot, notice it's matching the T in foot. It's matching the B in bar. It's matching a space character. It matches anything that's not a new line character. The next one is kind of fun. It's called an alternation. It's the pipe symbol. It creates a branch for the regular expression to follow. So in this example, down there at the bottom where it says bar pipe foo, it's saying, okay, I want you to look for the literal characters B, A, R. And if you, can, if you can't find that, I then want you to look for F, O, O. However, there is a warning with this. That warning is that regular expression engines are very, eager. They're very eager to find a match and return as quickly as possible. So what I mean by that is in this example, this example sentence where we have, there were many cats near the bowl with one cat by the door. As it's parsing, it starts with C-A-T and it goes through and it says, oh, here is C-A-T and returns, even though C-A-T-S may be a more complete or more exact match. The important bit here is it's, it's not that you shouldn't use them. It's to remember that regular expression engines in an alternation are always gonna give a preference to the left-hand side. That right-hand side is always gonna come secondary and will only look for that second piece if it cannot, under any circumstance, find the first one. So I'm gonna come back over here and we're gonna do uh, maybe Baz and Foo. So you can see now it's saying, okay, can I find B-A-Z? No, okay, can I find F-O-O? -O? Yep. In this case, it's saying, can I find B-A-Z? Yep, so I'll go on to the next one. Just creates an OR statement, if you will. If you're, if you're used to programming, it would be like an OR statement. All right, the next one is part of a another subgroup called quantifiers. And this allows us to designate how many times something should be repeated. So the question mark says the preceding token, and I'm going to come right back to that word token. It says, make the preceding token in the regular expression optional. Either I can match it zero times or one time. So we'd say it's a token because in a little bit, we're gonna talk about sub patterns and ways that we can build uh, embedded patterns. And these quantifiers can work on those sub patterns. So in this case, an O can stand on its own. It's not a sub pattern. So we're saying, I can find F, O, and then I can either find one or no instances of O and then B, A, R. So I'll come out and build that so you can see that. We'll say F, O, O, B, A, R. And notice I am matching foo with two O's because I can have one instance, or I'm matching FOBAR because I can also have zero instances of that O. The next, oh, and there's a warning. I almost forgot about the warning. That's called greediness. The warning is about greediness. Um, quantifiers turn greediness on in a regular expression. And what I mean by greediness is the regular expression engine will attempt to match every single possible instance of what is repeated for as long as possible. So it's like the cat and cats, but we flipped it. In this case, if I were to use C-A-T-S question mark, it's always going to try to match C-A-T-S before it tries to match C-A-T. It's not as problematic with the question mark, but it becomes more problematic as we move into other quantifiers, because again, it's always gonna try to match as many times as it can until it simply can no longer make that match. The next quantifier then is an asterisk. Uh, it matches the preceding token in the expression either zero times or infinity times. So if I come out here and I change my question mark, oops, on my mouse, there we go, from a question mark to an asterisk, 
Notice not only is it matching F-O-O, -O, it's matching F-O-B, but it's also matching foo bar. It's matching every single O until there are no more O's to match and then continues on with B, A, and R. The next quantifier is the plus sign. So it's like the last one, except it says, okay, instead of optional zero, I have to have at least one time. I have to have match at least once, but then can also match out to infinity. So if we change that asterisk now to a plus, notice I'm no longer matching so bar, but I am matching foo bar, and I'm also matching F-O-O -O bar, as well as the one up here. All right, now sometimes we need a little more granular control over the number of times we're matching something. That's where the curly brace comes into place. So the open curly brace combining, combined with the closing curling brace allows us to designate an exact minimum and maximum number of times we want that previous thing to be matched. So the format is min comma max, where the min is a zero or a positive integer, then we have a comma, and then we have a max, and max needs to be an integer, and it has to be at least equal to or greater than the min. If we omit the max but leave the comma, then it stands for infinity. So if we look back to our previous special characters that we just talked about, those are really just shortcuts to this more granular control. So the question mark, which was optional, zero or one, is really just curly brace zero comma one. So minimum of zero, maximum of one. The asterisk then is zero comma infinity all the way out as many times. And the plus sign then is, this is normally where in a live audience you'd have to answer, but one to infinity. So I have to have at least a minimum of one match all the way out to infinity. If you admit the comma and the max, then you're saying I want you to match exactly this number of times. So if I come back in here and I change this from say maybe, uh, or I use like two to five, I'm saying, all right, I have to match at least F, O, and then two more O's, so three O's total, then B, A, R, up to a maximum of five O's. And the only one that's matching here in this case is this big long foo bar. Probably doesn't make quite as much sense yet, but remember that we can combine these with sub patterns, which we're going to see in a bit, which will allow us to create sub patterns and say, all right, I want you to repeat this sub pattern X number of times. Oh, and I almost forgot. The ending curly brace is very similar to that ending square bracket, uh, where it's not a special character all by itself. It's only a special character when it combined with the opening one in order to define that specific number of rep repetitions. All right, so we've gone through 10 of the 12. Hopefully everyone is, is mostly following along so far. We've got two left to go through, and that is that, that subgroup that I was talking about, those sub patterns. The opening closing parens allows you to create a pattern inside of that opening closing paren to create a sub pattern. And I really like this example of the English, the excuse me, the American versus the British spelling of theater. So let me make sure I'm, there's theater, you see right there. So if I wanted to match both instances, I would need some way to say either E-R or R-E. This is a great example of when we can use a sub pattern. So I can go in and I can say, all right, I want you to match the literal characters E-R, then using that alternation character we talked about, could say or R-E, and now notice I am matching both theater with an E-R and theater with an R-E. Same kind of example with maybe say dishes, both dish and, oh, I have to spell it correctly, but not dishes, but dishes, there we go. If I wanted to match dish or dishes, I could say, all right, match D-I-S-H, then match E-S inside this sub pattern. And earlier we saw a way to tell the regular expression engine that a previous pattern was optional with the question mark. And now I've matched both dish and dishes. May I hope this is making sense. One more to show you is if I were to create a sub pattern of bar and then tell it I want it to repeat twice, notice that gives me the ability, hopefully you can see this all the way down at the bottom to match foo bar bar. 
So I've said match the literal characters F, O, and O. Now I'll go into my sub pattern and match the character B, A, and R. And I want you to repeat that twice. Now, unfortunately, I can't see your faces. Hopefully you are blown away with excitement and the power that has just been revealed to you. So I wanna finish up with the last set of special characters we have. And that is the open and closing parentheses, uh, parentheses, open and close, yeah, open and closing parentheses, which allows you to create capture groups. So, okay, it's really not as bad. All groups are capturing groups. The ones we just created are actually capturing groups. And what I mean by a capturing group is when you create a sub pattern and the regular expression engine finds that sub pattern, it will hold on to it in memory so that you can reuse it later on. And you can have many groups inside your, inside your regular expression and you access them ordinarily. So if you have group one, group two, group three, uh, you can go back and say, okay, I want access to what you found for group one, for group two, for group three. In fact, if you remember back to my, the phone numbers, I don't know if you can quite see that up here, but here I've got these groups where I'm matching digits. And then over here, I said, hey, I want group two. I want to use group three. I want to use group four. So let me come in here and we'll do, uh, we'll just do flu and bar. And if I go to substitution, now you can see I'm going to grab, I'm going to access it. And in some regular expressions, it's a dollar sign. Uh, the specifics will depend on the regular expression engine, but I can say, hey, replace what you found with dash dash, then the group that you matched and dash dashed again. So capturing just lets you uh, use for both that string manipulation and then also reuse what you've already found in those sub patterns. All right, that's all 12. That is the big collection of special characters. Uh, normally, I give a little pop quiz. Instead, I'm just going to walk through them. So again, we have that backslash, which is the delimiter. It tells the regular expression engine, hey, this next character, don't use its normal, use its alternate meaning. We have the caret symbol, which anchors our pattern to the front of a string or a line. Then the dollar sign anchors to the end of a string or a line. We have the opening square bracket, which allows us to begin the definition of a character class where we have a single literal character that we're going to match inside that character class. That caret symbol comes back into play here again, and we can then negate what's in the character class. We then have the period, which stands in for any single character. We've got the pipe symbol, which, said, which creates an or for the regular expression engine to follow. We've got the question mark that says, hey, that previous thing is either, I have to match it either zero times or one time. We've got the asterisk that says, hey, it can be zero or infinity. The plus, which is one to infinity. Then if we need more fine grain control over repetitions, we've got the curly brace and the ending curly brace where we can designate a min and a max. And then we have the parentheses, which allows us to create sub patterns and capture groups. Woo, that's a lot to cover in 40 minutes. I'm hoping everybody has followed along, but I got a bonus for you. Now, this is an advanced topic. All right, I'm just gonna put that out there. If you don't understand this, that is completely okay. This is an advanced topic. One, we need this for the puzzle we're going to play. But two, I want you to be exposed to the ideas and the terms so that as you're using regular expressions, you, you get to a point and you go, hey, I kind of remember that scenario being mentioned. You've at, least, you've at least seen it one time. They are referred to as lookarounds. They're a feature of regular expressions which gives you additional power that's kind of hard to do without them. Uh, they're often referred to as zero length assertions. They don't capture anything. They really don't match anything. Instead, they tell the regular expression whether or not something is true or false. We're able to look ahead in a look around, or we can look behind. So if you think back to the wolf document, and I said I needed to find all instances of the word wolf or wolves that wasn't preceded by the word red, that was a negative look behind. I said, find the word wolf, look behind where you just were and see if red shows up. And if it didn't, then go ahead and match. So we can either do look aheads, we can do look behinds, we can say this thing has to be here or this thing doesn't have to be here. Now, again, this is an advanced topic, totally get that. Took me a long time to wrap my head around it. What finally did it for me 
was an instance where, since I can click on this tab, I needed to be able to match the letter Q inside words where it was not followed by a U. Now we have some of the tools, we've covered some of the tools to do this, right? We know we can use the literal character Q, that's good. And earlier when we talked about character classes, we said we could say, hey, find something that's not something. That was that negation inside a character class. So I could say, hey, find anything that's not a U, and that gets me close, right? So I've matched QWERTY and Quintars and Terraquat and Sinks. I, these are, I have no idea what these words are. I just looked up words without a U. Um, but notice it didn't match Iraq. And the reason is because there is no character after the Q, and a character class has to match at least a single literal character from the character class, which is also why it's matching the A and the I and the W. This is where that power of that look around comes in. Now, unfortunately, this is another situation where we're going to use a previous character and it's going to change its meaning. We're going to use the parens to create this look around. We tell it it's not a regular group by starting it with a Q, that's not a Q, excuse me, a question mark. And then we say, look ahead in a negative sense using the exclamation. And then we tell it what not to find, and that's a U. So now notice I'm matching the Q in QWERTY. I'm matching the Q in Quintars. I'm also matching Iraq. So we've said, look for a Q. Now stop. Once you find a Q, pause. Now regular expression engine, look forward into the string. And is the next character not a U? If it's not a U, go ahead and find a match. If it is a U, stop processing, go to the next line. All right, I know that's an advanced topic. Again, I, I just want you to be exposed to it. I want you to have, have seen a scenario in which it was used so you have that in the back of your mind. And again, we're gonna need that for the game. So now we're gonna play a game. Unfortunately, this is a webinar, it's not as interactive. Normally I sit back, you build the regular expressions to solve this puzzle. I'm just the guide and the typist. Unfortunately, we can't do that as easily here, so I'm going to help you build it, but we're going to play Wordle. Now, this is not cheating. I keep getting accused of this being cheating. The goal is not to solve today's Wordle. The goal is to build a regular expression in which case would solve today's Wordle. So don't accuse me of cheating right off the bat. So I've got Wordle here. Where do I have Wordle? All right. If you have never played Wordle, uh, in Wordle, what we want to do is we want to try to guess a five-letter word. Uh, proper nouns are not allowed, so these are all lowercase, although they're shown in uppercase. I also have this set as a sidebar. I have this set to high contrast mode because I am colorblind. So when you guess a word, it is going to color the tiles. Uh, I don't know if that's orange or green, but whatever the color that is, uh, that one means it is the correct letter in the correct location in the word. The blue here means, okay, that letter is in the word, but it's not in the correct location. And the gray here means that is not in the word at all, nor is it in the right location because it's not in the word at all. Now, I normally like to start my Wordle with the word audio. I'll type that out there because that gets me four of the five vowels right out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. All right, so we know that A is not used at all. U is the correct letter in the correct location. D is used somewhere in the word, but not there. And I and O are not used at all. Now, I happen to have, whoops, there we go. Let's come back over here. I happen to have a collection of words, but let's, and this is just, uh, it's, a, it's a shortened set of words. It's in the regular expression presentation here under dipped. Um, it is a shortened collection of words because I didn't want to have to have this building tool try to parse out, I don't know, 150, however many words are in the English language trying to get down to five. But let's pretend for a second it actually is the full dictionary. You have the tools, you have the skills now to limit all thousands, hundreds of thousands of words down to just five letter lowercase words, right? Because we know we can do the anchor. And we should always anchor whenever possible. We want to capture the group so that we can display it down here to know what we've matched more easily. And we've already talked about how we can tell the regular expression engine to match lowercase letters by using a 
character class of A through Z lowercase. And we have the tools that we need in order to tell it to match that pattern five times. All right, so even if we had a giant dictionary, we have the skills currently to limit that down to a collection that we can use inside a world. And you should be able to see here, we have 12,971, nine, two, oh good, I just can't talk all of a sudden, 12,971 matches. But we know a couple of extra pieces of information, don't we? We know we don't want A, I, or O. So we can come in here and say, instead of giving me everything A to Z, hey, just give me everything that's not A, I, or O. All right, well, we've already gone from 13,000 down to 2,500, but we still know more, don't we? We also know that U is in the second place and then we have to have a D, all right? So I'm, instead of doing five, I'm gonna say, in the second place is a U. And then I'm going to say, hey, I don't want A, I, or O. I also don't want a D in that third spot. And then I know I don't want A, I, or O in the last two spots. Now we've gone 13,000 to 2,500 to 663 matches in just one guess. And we're still not done because the other piece of information we know is that we have to have a D somewhere in the word. And we just went through the look arounds, which allowed us to say, hey, I need to match somewhere in this string, something in this case, I'm saying match anything that has a D where it might also be followed by zero or infinity. And we've gone from 13,000 to 2,500 to 600 to 104 matches and we've only had one guess. And sure enough, every single word here now is got a U in the second place. It's got a D in the word, but it's not in the third place. I'm gonna go past all these Ds. Uh, all kinds of words here, but only a hundred words. So I'm gonna grab, nuked is a little, well, I'll go, yeah, we'll go with nuked. What the heck? I'm gonna say nuked, N-U-K-E-D. Let's see if that's it. Oh, okay. So now we know we don't want an N or a K. So I'm gonna go add those. So we don't want enter K in any of these spots. And we now know the fourth spot is an E. So we no longer need two of these. And we also know that last spot can't be a D. Ah, okay. So we've gone 13,000 to 2,500 to 600 to 104 to seven in two matches or two, excuse me, two guesses. So now we're down to deuces, duels, dupers, dupes, duras, duvet. I don't know much. I don't, dupes and duvet are pretty much the only words I really recognize there. So I'm going to try dupes. Or unless somebody says to try another one. Nope, nobody said anything. I'm going to try dupes. Oh, close. Okay, so we know the first one is D. So we get rid of this. So we know the first one is a D. Then we have a U. And then, whoops, losing my places. We know the next one can't be a P or an S. We know the third one or the fourth one is an E. We know that last one is not an S. Ah, do that. And we'll try that D U V E T. Ta da! Boom. All right. Perfect. Oh, come back over to my presentation. There we go. We don't really have time for more, but if you want to play this kind of game more, uh, there are some Wordle clones out there that you can use to do this kind of thing. Uh, you can also, there's also a crossword puzzle where you solve regular, sorry, you have a regular expression and you solve what it is to fill out the crossword puzzle, which is really fun. Uh, again, kind of getting that brain to think about how to build these regular expressions. I want to quickly point out some resources and acknowledge that these are fantastic resources. I would not know nearly as much about regular expression without these. And again, you're gonna get this PDF. I think you already posted it in the chat. Um, these are in there. So I strongly encourage you uh, to go look those up. And I would be happy to take on any questions at this point. I think we've got a couple of minutes left. This is great, Paul. What a blast. Um, Good, I'm hoping everybody had fun with it. Yeah, so we have this expression on uh, iThemes training. It is a regular expression here that we call duct tape time. 
And this is when you have to wrap your head in duct tape so as it doesn't explode. Right. And there was a little bit of that today. There's a little bit of that today. That's okay. I understand regular expressions pretty much. Like I get it. I understand the 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 why things are the way they are. Um, so let me just invite everybody to take a look at the Q and A. Pop open the Q and A window. Scroll through those questions. If there's a question you'd like to see answered, give it an upvote. And uh, it seems like the prevailing uh, question, Lydia's got it there in the chat. There's another question from Ben, uh, similar to this. And it's really, okay, our audience are people who build and manage WordPress sites, typically for clients. Where would we find regex showing up in WordPress? So the big one, so I, for those that don't know, I used to manage the WordPress workflows and websites for the University of Missouri, and we had three or 400 sites there. Um, the big place that I used, the, I should say the most routine place that I used regular expressions was in rewrites and redirects, right? Matching on requests that need to go somewhere else or rewriting requests uh, in Apache to something else. Um, and so you use a lot of regular expressions there. Um, I use them a lot in form processing. So I'm getting something and I want to ensure that it's uh, an email or a phone number. It's in some, I'm doing that validation, right? That input validation uh, to ensure there. Uh, occasionally, we had some pretty advanced frameworks that we used that, uh, that did its own uh, auto loading. And so you do a lot of regular expressions there of saying, okay, what is this thing I've been given? I'm going to break it apart and figure out what I've done or what I've got, uh, and then use those pieces to maybe load up another file. Uh, so there's lots of places that they can be used. Uh, again, it, it, one of the warnings, you know, I talked about uh, how you have to be careful is you have to know the context, right? Uh, a dot star that I used in the game is that dot star can be dangerous because the dot, again, remember, stands for any character except for new line. And the asterisk says repeat to infinity. So that can be a really dangerous regular expression because it's going to match anything except a new line. But in the context of today, I already knew that every single word in that dictionary was already a lowercase five letter word. So being a little less optimized is okay. So part of that is just knowing, and that, and that takes, uh, not expertise, uh, experience. That's what I'm looking for. That just takes experience of knowing when to use and when not to use and when is, when is another solution going to be more optimal. Yeah, got it. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, this is, it's, this is like any other language, right? We see the t- programming or, you know, human language. You can kind of get the basics, but it does take like you have to use this and sort of figure it out. But uh, like in an hour, though, I think we've gotten a really good lay of the land on how this whole thing works. That's pretty cool. Um, That's that's part of why I really encourage people to play those games. You know, go and play the crossword regex. Go and play Wordle where you're not doing the Wordle so much as you're you're trying to build the regex to the Wordle uh, to get your brain thinking, Okay, how can I do this? What can I do? Um, maybe if you're trying to find something in a piece of text sometime, instead of just doing it normal, you know, say, hey, can I build a regex to do this? And just try to get that that muscle memory going. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, a, a, a really nice way that this that the regex can be implemented in just about every website is if you're asking for a phone number and a form and you have 1800 formats like you just showed in that spreadsheet. Right. You can add some uh, many form plugins, allow you to do some post processing on that so that everything is yeah. in the format that you want, whatever that happens to look like. Um, there's a question here from Karen. Here's a good practical um, use of regex for like a rewrite. So Karen says, I have the, the current blog is domain name.com slash blog post. So it's just the post name after you know the domain. Okay. If I wanted to add slash blog, in front of those posts, what would be the regex to rewrite that? I know there's some conditional things about post types and stuff, but just if I wanted to change all my URLs so that it went from domain name.com slash post name and put a blog in there, how would I do that in regex? Oh, so what you would probably do, and this goes, go, uh, where's, where's my mouse? I've lost my mouse, there it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's flip back over here and let's grab this. Let's get rid of this. Uh, so we've got domain name.com. Oops. 
can't type. And we've got slash blog post. And what we want to do is we want to get that to domain name dot com slash blog. Is that what I'm calling? Yep. Slash blog post. Yep. Okay. So yeah, yeah the slash do, blog slash blog post like you had. Yeah. Now inside of Apache, we usually don't have to worry about the domain name. So it would just be probably just blog post. And then we're going to have something at the end, right? So it's going to be blog post slash uh, some post of mine. So what we could do is we could say, hey, I want to match from the beginning. Uh, I want to do, and you don't have to escape, by the way, in the forward slash inside Apache, you don't have to escape. I don't think it should complain if you do, but I'm going to here to make sure. So if we have blog post, um, and then we let's, uh, flip that uh, slash there. And then it might be, we might use a dot star and capture that whole thing. And then down below, we're going to switch that and send that to blog dollar one. Aha, uh -huh. look at that. And so dollar one is basically the, it's like a variable in a sense, right? That's pulling yeah. in from. Yep, that capture group uh, is ordinal. So if I had two for some reason, you know, uh, dot star, I don't know how I'd separate this. Maybe another slash, uh, another slash, and then maybe a dot star. This was more. So then I could do slash dollar two to get the more part. Interesting. Now, now, you probably would not use a dot star here. This was a quick one, right? Just to show you. You would probably want to be more specific. Uh, it might be, especially if I'm looking for this other slash, I might say, hey, uh, match everything that's not a slash. You know, to make sure that I can then get that slash. Again, hmm. so the context is going to depend. Uh, also in Apache, uh, the query variables, if there are any query variables, they're going to be in a separate area that you have to account for them as well. So there's there's more to it than just this, but that's that gives you kind of a quick, basic answer to that question. Yeah, for sure. So that answers this in regex. Now, a reg see, I just did it. See, I just sorry, did it. sorry. Regex. Uh, so, but the thing about this is, though, in WordPress, this is this is going to redirect every URL, right? Uh, no matter what. So it it wouldn't know that it was a blog post. And so there's other ways in WordPress to do this, but yeah. to get the renaming that this is essentially the the seed of the regex that would get that done. Correct. And if there were certain scenarios where you didn't want it to do it, there's also that look ahead, look behind, those look arounds that we can utilize to say, okay, I want to do this in every scenario, except when maybe a blogger is there. Or I don't, I don't know what the example of this case, but so we can also use those things inside rewrites and redirects as well. Yeah, it's really interesting. Paul, this has been great, man. Thanks so much for your time and the expertise on this. Uh, folks, great questions as well. Uh, yes. This is, I think this is going to be a rewatch for a lot of us just to get our heads uh, back around it. I'd encourage you all to share this as well. I'm going to drop in the link bundle uh, one more time there in the chat. Uh, Paul, tell us about what is platform.sh and where can they find you? So they can find me. Uh, basically, you can remember my last name, G-I-L-Z-O-W. You Google me. I'm pretty much Gilzo everywhere. I'm, I'm blessed in that there's only a handful of Gilzos in the world. Um, and most of them are related to me. So it's really easy to find me. Uh, you can also get me at paul.gilzo at platform.sh. Uh, we are a platform as a service provider. We manage infrastructure and deployments uh, so that you don't have to worry about infrastructure. We manage that. We expose that infrastructure back to you as uh, simple configuration files. So Great example is trying to upgrade your PH or your WordPress site from PHP 7.4 to 8.1. Well, it's as easy as saying, I want PHP 8.1, you commit it and push it, and we give you your code on that stack, and then you can test it. It's an exact copy of production, and that way, as you move that code in production, you know you've tested it exactly the same way as what you're going to get in production. Uh, it is, for me, it was the same epiphany as when I started using Git of having this freedom to experiment and have alternate universes of code, I now had alternate universes of stacks and infrastructure that I could play with and allowed me to iterate much faster. Um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm as, as excited to talk about platform as I am about regular expressions. Very cool. Well, Paul, thanks again uh, for your expertise and your time on this. Thank you all for being uh, with us as well. Great questions and good chat throughout. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for us today. I'm back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central for office hours for our members. And we'll see you back then on iThemes Training where we go further together.